Hello and welcome to the final Spartan Sports Central episode of 2016-17. We have an exciting episode ahead for you. We are visiting with Stafford Boys track and field coach Sergio Hinojosa as the Spartans prepare for the state meet and coach Melissa Hoffman of the SHS girls track and field team as her athletes prepare for state as well. You'll get a chance to meet Impact Junior Dylan Smith who competes in baseball and football for the Spartans. We all also have a special guest in Frank Hong, the head coach of the Stafford High Robotics team. Robotics won a 48-team tournament last month to qualify for the World Championships where they finished in the top one-third of teams. Finally, it's a blast from the past as we take a look back at Stafford's 1992 Boys Basketball State Championship with Isaac Hudson and guests. Welcome, Coach Hinojosa. Thank you, Master Abby. Yeah, it's good to see you. So um, you have several athletes going to state, Kenneth Bodwin's in three events. I know he was a guest on this show. Talk about what um, Kenneth means to you as an athlete and to this team. Well, Kenneth has been our pretty much our backbone uh, the entire season. He's our team MVP. Um, he is a five, five event uh, competitor for us. He pretty much can do anything we ask him to do from the relays to, of course, all the field events. He's a, he was a regional qualifier in the long jump, triple jump, high jump, 300 meter hurdles, and the four by four. So Kenneth is a, a very strong junior. He's a, a, actually starting to get recruited to the next level. So we're pretty excited about what his uh, next year is gonna look like. But most importantly this year, uh, he has a chance to get on the award stand in at least uh, all three of those events that he's in. So he's 300 meter hurdles, um, long jump, and then also four by four relay. That's correct, yep. Okay. He will be our lead off leg for the four by four. And then in addition to him, you have Ryan Martin, who will also be making his debut at state. Ryan Martin's a sophomore. He uh, ran for us last year on the JV team, and he's uh, really made a tremendous improvement this year. And uh, he's a pretty fast kiddo. He's a... Uh, he was a member of our 4x1 and 4x2 teams, and he'll be running. Uh, he was a regional champion in the 100, so he'll be competing for a state championship in that. Tell me about the rest of the 4x4 team. 4x4 team, we have actually one freshman, one sophomore, a junior, and a senior, so um, looks promising for next year. Um, we have uh, starting Riles, ninth grader. Uh, he is uh, running really well. He's uh, He is going to... Uh, um, he's going to run summer track this year, so we're looking forward to what he'll do next year as well. But he's doing good. Kenneth Bodwin, of course, like we mentioned, and then we've got a senior, Jarrell Hunter, who is an 800-meter kid who is going to run our second leg. And then we've got uh, uh, Jalen Curry. Jalen Curry, who is a sophomore. Okay. So. Of course, and he's getting recruited in football by several schools. Yeah, they're, they're up here every day looking for him, football. Oh, wow. Okay. And then in regionals, the top two qualify – for um, the state meet. Now that's, um, we've had a lot of kids who almost made it to state as well. Yep, a little disheartening. We had, uh, we had seven different events qualified at the regional meet and four of those we finished uh, in the third spot. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, it's just that one spot away from making it. One so. spot away, yeah. Um, and then you recently got a promotion. You're the um, associate um, athletic director, assistant associate athletic director. And um, congratulations on that. And Thank tell you. me um, what you're going to be doing in that role. Well, uh, once I start full blown, I'll be really excited to to be doing that. Um, in that new role, I'll be helping coaches uh, do, you know, teach their kiddos better and, and do things better for them. Uh, we'll be looking for a lot of new coaches this year. We have several that are going to be look the, they're going to be leaving. So we're going to be really busy and getting our summer summer strength and conditioning camp uh, going and uh, summer camps and all the various sports. So a lot of other projects that we've got that are gonna be starting up. So really exciting times and just looking forward to it. But you'll continue in your duties as a cross country and track coach? Uh, actually, I will just do track and field. Okay. And um, Coach Maldonado will be our new head boys uh, cross country coach. Oh, great. And he's familiar with the territory, no pun yeah. intended. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, um, we appreciate your time, Coach. We wish you the best at state. It's on Friday or Saturday, Saturday in Austin, Texas at the University of Texas. The next up is the player profile on Dylan Smith. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But you probably won't. You're busy. Kids, work, show coming back in 48 seconds. 
So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man. Women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60. Two over 50. One over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no. Next, find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers while I look around awkwardly. And that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. <laughs> I'm a retired school psychologist, and helping people was my thing. I was very independent and thought I could take care of myself. I fell, and I had to have Meals on Wheels. After my stroke, when Meals on Wheels started, I was on the other end of the stick, so to speak. Meals on Wheels, coming to my door as someone who's housebound, having someone check on me assures me that I'm not forgotten. Meals on Wheels has given me a mode of freedom that I wouldn't have otherwise. We are the clients. We are the clients. We are the clients of Meals on Wheels. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. So, so we, we were, were walking, walking to school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom packed me turkey and cheese. She's I smart. Really cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind pizza. wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't I have really another bad day. I really hope I don't have another school. bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. Dylan Smith is a lifelong Stafford resident, but he just transferred to Stafford MSD last fall. He's already made his presence known, and we're glad to have him on the field, the diamond, and in the classroom. Batting fifth, the center fielder, number 15, Dylan Smith. We've all had that happen. The announcer mispronounces your name. Not a problem, as long as the coach gets it right. Dylan Smith is a junior baseball player for us. He plays center field and pitcher. He's a good kid. Um, you know, he works hard at baseball. Uh, he plays football for us also. He's been an important pitcher, but he's been most important for us in his um, play in the outfield this year. He's, he's a great team player. Um, you know, he does whatever we ask him to on the baseball field. Uh, and tries to help out as much as he can wherever he can. What exactly is a team player? You can't really down your team. Teammates, you got to pick everybody back up. Like even when you're losing 20 to 0, you got to pick everybody back up. You can't let anyone's heads go down. You have to um, stay strong throughout the whole game. Um, I'd say the qualities that make a good baseball player, you have to be smart and understand and know the game. Um, you also have to have a lot of heart and be willing to compete. Um, and you have to have a lot of guts and be able to bounce back after you make mistakes because you always make mistakes in baseball. Uh, and it's the players and the teams that can bounce back from those mistakes that become successful. Junior Dylan Smith used to play all the sports. Um, I used to play basketball, run track when I was in middle school, but now I just limited it to two sports, football and baseball. And I need to focus more on school. My favorite classes is math and chemistry, like math and science. Math and science is his path to becoming a mechanical engineer someday. He hasn't selected a college yet, but he knows what he wants. He wants to be in control. I like pitching because I like to control the game. He's leading the team in several of our categories. Uh, He's one of our offensive leaders. He has one of the highest batting averages on the team. Um, he's, I think he's tied for the lead in stolen bases on the team right now. Um, and he's one of our main starting pitchers this year. He, I think he leads the team in strikeouts right now. 
Coach Kellner knows a good player when he has one, and he warns Dylan not to let it go to his head. He told me that, that don't, don't just you know, look at the cameras, because he told me that I need to focus on the game, because I seen the cameras out there the other night, mm -hmm. and I had figured, I thought maybe they're out there you know, for me, because I like cameras. <laughs> I like to shine. But don't be fooled by this hint of teenage vanity. This kid is thankful. I'd like to thank my mom and all my coaches that have brought me to this point. Um, I'd like to thank my whole family, my grandma, my uncle. With this much potential, you have to ask yourself what Dylan Smith will be in 20 years. Either a nice engineer or maybe a professional. Professional, mm -hmm. in any particular field? professional baseball player. <laughs> What is certain is that he will be outstanding in his field. For Spartan Sports Central, I'm John Woods. Next up is Frank Hong, the head coach of the Stafford High Robotics Program. We, we just, just finished, finished dinner, dinner and it was time for homework. homework. He I hates hate homework. homework. It makes no sense. I don't know how he finds anything in his backpack. I can't find my backpack. Finally, we found, found my his assignment. assignment. He rushed through it. I wonder if he even learned anything. I wasn't going to get it right, so I just wanted to get back to playing my video game. At least I'm good at that. I couldn't even read his handwriting. Holding the pencil makes my hand hurt. I know he's bright. Why is it so hard for me? He's I'm just trying as try hard as I harder. can. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. That's why there's understood.org, a free online resource for the parents of the one in five kids with learning and attention issues. Here you'll get personalized recommendations, practical tips, daily access to experts, and more. Go from misunderstanding to understood.org. Calls me googly eyes. And you know you're beautiful, right? You know that? Even you are beautiful. I got bullied for wearing glasses. Share if you're against bullying. We put it out there, just took off. Three million people have shared this post. <laughs> Don't let bullies get you down. I stand with you. <laughs> Our whole family's wearing glasses. Yay. I wear glasses and I'm proud. The army on my team. All the kind comments brought my child joy. I don't feel thank you is enough. When it comes to saving money, uh, what? Don't act like a baby. Oh, it's like they're having their own little meeting. This is so humiliating. Be the boss. I'm the boss. What the? Mm -hmm. Power nap. You were saying. And make a budget. Let's get to work. Need a little help? Stacy, read back the notes. I can't read. What's it say? Create a personalized savings plan and get other tools and tips. We can share. You obviously didn't go to business school. At feedthepig.org. Robotics combines science, technology, engineering, and math. Stafford MSD has become one of the top robotics programs in the Houston area under the expert direction 
of head coach Frank Hong. Welcome back to the show, coach. Thank you. All right. Well, um, you guys have a lot going on. You just last month won a championship out of 48 teams in San Antonio. What can you tell me about that? Well, actually, it's 68 teams. 68. Yes. Okay. Um, well, um, robotics started at uh, mid-January, mm -hmm. and then all the teams have to compete in the regional. So the regional run from March all the way to May. Okay. And they pick the um, the top team who won, you know, any award or won the uh, uh, competition, and they invited into the world championship. So we participate in Houston, and then two weeks later we uh, attend the Alamo Regional, and we won a championship over there. Okay, and how much did that mean to your program, for your robotics program to win that championship? Yeah, that meant a lot because, um, you know, take the whole team at a high perspective. We, we have to work really hard now, and because we won a championship, so we have to stay at that reputation. Uh, so we're going to start the robotic program early next year and ready for next year competition. And we talked about, um, you know, winning that regional in San Antonio, but then you got to compete at the World Championships, which was right here in Houston. What was that like going to World? Uh, first of all, every team has to be invited. Mm -hmm. uh, this year they opened another venue in Houston. It used to be in San Luis, so this year they have two venues, one in San Luis, one in Houston. Oh, wow. Texas, so a combined of 800 teams. So because we won the, the Alamo Regional, so we got invited to the World Championship and we invited as a merit. So they pay all of our re transportation, uh, registration fee and everything combined of $6,000. Oh, okay, okay. Wow, so um, how far have, have your uh, students come since they started with the robotics program to where they're winning regionals and qualifying for world championships. Talk about how far they've come. Yes, sir. Well, the robotic only, this is our second year. And this year, mostly the students came in as freshmen and sophomore. So basically, all the students, they, they had no experience with robotic. Uh, I can give you an example, one of our students named James. He came in. He first came in, he didn't know how to use a screwdriver or a hammer and stuff like that. But now he became our pit manager, so that means, wow. yeah, he learned a lot. And actually, we have only 12 students, and each one mm -hmm. of us, we work night and day. Okay, we had only six weeks to be a robot, so. So it really creates an uh, um, interest in science, technology, engineering, and math for the students. Yes, sir, we have to apply everything. Uh, first of all, you have to talk about engineering, you have to talk about management, teamwork, and all kind of thing. Um, so, you know, management, we have to manage our time because we have only six weeks. And then we have to think about, okay, how we're going to build a robot to meet the uh, need for the games. Well, speaking of that, you guys aren't finished yet. You're going to Austin, not this weekend, but next weekend for the UIL uh, state competition. So are you looking forward to that? Yes, sir. We are very fortunate. We are one of the 32 teams around Texas invited to the UIL state championship. So, yes, we are ready for it. Uh, we did really well in the world championship. And I think now we head back to Texas championship. We probably do better. Having that experience that you gained at the world championships will help you? Yes, uh, a lot of experience, uh, especially the student. Uh, they are the main factor, uh, you know, for the team, so I think they're very confident. They say they are world-class uh, robotic competitors, so I think they will do well. Okay, well thanks for being on the show, Mr. Hong. We Thank appreciate you. it. Next up is an interview with Stafford Girls track coach, Melissa Hoffman. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant! Behold, the angry giant! It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Guess what? I have some news for you. 
There's free food right there, junk food. You see that truck? Oh, jeez. It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen, all for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. Okay. How we doing? Fantastic. So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Really? Is there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Yeah. Carrot top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little like bruised? Great. It was good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers, but you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Welcome back to Spartan Sports Central. The Stafford High girls track and field team has had another exceptional season, finishing second at the district meet and qualifying athletes for this weekend's state meet. Welcome back to the show, Coach Hoffman. It's good to have you back on the show. Nice to be here. All right. Well, um, you have an athlete who has qualified in three events, Cheyenne Hill Johnson. She'll be making her state debut. Talk about um, her efforts this season in qualifying for state. Um, it's been four years in the making, and um, she's been close as a sophomore and a junior, and so this year she was able to make the cut and get it done, and so we're very proud of her. Okay. So she is going in the 100, the 200, and then the 4x1 um, relay? Yes, sir. Okay. So um, which event does she have the strongest chance to uh, medal in? Um, she's going in the strongest place in the 200, um, so we're hoping that she can get on the medal stand and... Um, you know, bring home some hardware, but she's also got a shot in the 100. You know, it's a short race, anything can happen, so we're not counting that race out either. So last year you just had one event, and then this year, or actually was it two events? We had two events. Two Lynette events. was in the 800 and the mile. And three events this year, so are you proud of the progress the team has made? Um, that 4 by one it's been four years we've been trying to get that 4 by one to state, so very proud of the progress. And they're close to breaking the school record, so... We're, we're when pleased. When was that set? Um, I think it was set back in like 2001. 2001, okay. So, so tell me about the other athletes on that 4x1 on that team behi uh, besides Cheyenne. We have a freshman, um, scratch leg Jayla Pratt, and then Cheyenne on second leg. Um, Faith O'Diggy is a junior, and our anchor Shanta Thomas is a sophomore. Okay, so three underclassmen mm -hmm. on that team, wow. Um, the state meet is uh, Saturday in mm -hmm. Austin yes. at the University of Texas. Now, you've been there many times before. What's it like being in that atmosphere of, of a state meet? Um, it's, it's something that we try to prepare them for throughout the year. We go to Texas Relay so they get a chance to run at UT, become familiar with the track. We've taken Cheyenne in previous years when Lynette had qualified so she could kind of get an idea because we had a strong feeling that she was going to be there soon and we just try to prepare them to be able to run on that stage because it is pretty imposing so we try to prepare them for that. You talked about you know her Cheyenne trying to qualify in the past you talked about the four by one trying to qualify and coming close in the past what was the difference this time um, to make it as opposed to um, being almost there? I think in years past, we had come in, you know, third, fourth, fifth. They always take the top two. So some of those returners have been so close before. They really bought in this year. And honestly, they just grinded it out. And we just were finally able to get over that little hump in the road. And um, we ran faster this year than we have in years past. And that was all it took. Was it more training, more practice? Or? I think it was more commitment on their part. Um, I think with age and maturity, they kind of bought in more to what we are trying to do and they saw if they would have just put 
you know, a little bit more time and effort in because we were so close, and then this year it finally paid off. So. Okay. Well, um, great. We appreciate your time on the show and wish you good luck on Saturday in Austin. Next up is an interview with members of the 1992 SHS boys basketball team. What are you, superheroes? Just four brothers who hate bullies and love this city. Five years ago, Stafford won its first team state championship. It would be 24 years before the school repeated that feat, and hopefully we can accomplish it again. Basketball is a tradition at Stafford High, and this team is the best among several great ones. So here I'm welcoming to the show members of that team, Isaac Hudson and Derek Thompson. Yes, how you doing? Great to see you guys. And y'all were honored, I know, earlier in the week for the... Um, by the Stafford MSD Board of Trustees. Was that a big honor for you? Uh, yes, it's, it's always a, an honor to be honored every time because you know you put in the work, you work hard, you want to represent the school and the district and the city and whenever someone uh, acknowledges that you did something good it always feels good. Okay, so um, Derek, what was it like playing on uh, that uh, state championship team in 1992? It was an awesome experience and uh, by myself being the youngest on the team, you know, I kind of had a a lot of big brothers that I still have today, but being on that team is just the experience of just brotherhood and just, you know, coming from nowhere to become the state champion of that year is an awesome accomplishment. Okay, and what are some of your memories, Isaac, of the championship game itself? Uh, the things I remember about the game is um, basically not being behind, you know, from the jump ball. That's I, right. I scored the first bucket. And then after that, you know, we were just going to win this game. We didn't know how much we were going to win by. But then it got close toward the end. That's right. But I never, never doubted it. Yeah, I have to tell you, I was earlier this week, I was traveling through Grossbeck. I think the people there are still upset that they didn't, you know, um, pull off the upset there. And beat you I, guys. Would, I would be upset, too. I, I believe they were uh, undefeated or something along those lines. They were pretty good. I mean, they're a great city. You know? They did. They had an awesome team. Awesome team. Okay. Um, do you guys as a group, do you stay in touch with a lot of your former teammates? As much as possible. You know, I have a wife and kids and, um, you know, so I do that quite a bit. Well, as on my behalf, thank God for Facebook. Mm -hmm. It really keeps us all intertwined in, in and just really keep us together. Okay, so Derek, I know you played football after um, high school. Tell me about that. Yes, I did. I left Stafford High School and uh, moved on to play at Trinity Valley Junior College. Uh, played two years there. I won a national championship there also. I uh, left there. I went and played at North Texas. I mean, Northwestern State. My brother plays at North Texas. That's Craig Robertson. Okay, but that's just great. another in yeah. insight. But uh, I went to Northwestern State in Natchez, Louisiana. I okay. left from there. I had a small stint with the New York Giants. Uh, it was cut. Uh, after that, I went and played at the calendar for a while, played about seven years of arena football, and now uh, I just really help the youth today, just really working with speed and conditioning and things of that sort. Oh, great, great. So, and Isaac, you're involved in, um, in motorsports in some way? I build motorbikes. Uh, I'm the CEO for Extreme Dream Bikes, That's and right. uh, what we do is uh, I build motorized bicycles and we race them. Okay, so even though it's been quite a while since you guys have played, basketball for Stafford High School, you still follow the team. I know I saw both of you at the um, playoff game when we uh, almost knocked off the top seed uh, Brazosport. Yeah, that's right. That's right, that's right. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the way we see it is they're little brothers, mm -hmm. and right. they'll, they'll always be little brothers year after year after year, and, um, and we're, we're here to support them. We want them to be successful. We don't want to be the only state champs. You know, a lot right. of people think we do, but we don't. We don't. We want a big group of champs. Okay. That's right. Okay. Great. Great. So um, we appreciate you um, being on the show and um, congratulations on your championship and thank you for um, still supporting Stafford MSC. All right. Well, that wraps up our show. Look for us in the fall for another edition of Stafford Spartan Sports Central.